Some people look at me funny when I tell them that I'm an engineer studying empathy. Empathy and engineering are two words that you don't typically hear in the same sentence together very often. Because empathy is about human relationships and taking a walk in somebody else's shoes, while engineering is about rational, objective design. However, empathy is absolutely critical to good engineering design. And of course, this isn't a conclusion that very many people come to, and this wasn't one that I came to until about two years ago in my final semester of my undergraduate education. And of course, it started with my love of travel. Travel opens you up to so many new opportunities, people, and cultures. It's so rich. And so it was no surprise that when I was presented with the opportunity to take a trip to Uganda, Africa, for an engineering trip, I said yes immediately, even without any details. But within the first two days of arriving in Uganda, it changed my perspective. Not only did I see a baby elephant cross the road, I had better cell service in the middle of the jungle than I do at my apartment here in Tempe. <laughs> and the bicyclists, they carry the most amazing things. I saw one man carrying four full-size mattresses on his bike. <laughs> Don't know how he did it, but I'm impressed. And the engineers we had the opportunity to work with were phenomenal. They were practically MacGyvers. They were able to take junk from the yard, plus junk, or not junk, but like car parts from the local mart, and put it together, and they made a bicycle generator that was used at the local hospital. Because Uganda has an unreliable power grid, the engineers were coming up with small-scale power systems to sell to the local community. And that's why we were there. We were working on a solar thermal generator with the engineers. And this was the first time I had been exposed to something called co-design. Designing with, not for, your end user. And because we were literally working and living with the locals, we were forced to understand their world and their perspectives. And the end result was a solar thermal trough that was influenced by global knowledge, but built with local values and benefited the local economy. And of course, returning home after this trip was really hard for me, because it was now T minus three months till graduation, and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life anymore. But thank goodness I was taking an improv theater class at this time, which forced me to tell travel stories over and over and over again. And this was a blessing in disguise because it helped me make sense of my trip and why I was there. And ultimately, I was there because I had learned a lesson in empathy. And I also realized that empathy is critical to good engineering design. Because engineers are preoccupied with technical failures. We tend to only pay attention to the impact that our work has on society when something blows up, falls down, or goes bankrupt. However, even an engineering success, a technical success, can be an empathic failure. When an engineer fails to think as their user thinks, feel as they feel, and act as they act, the result can be frustration, inequality, and sometimes pain. For example, the Loop 101 here in Arizona is an engineering success. But when it was first constructed, it bulldozed through a neighborhood and split it in two. And it created an inequality. The east side, although still technically part of the city of Tempe, was on the Mesa border. And that means it gets forgotten about a lot. And I know the engineers didn't intend for this inequality to happen, but they weren't thinking about that when they designed the freeway. And I have to wonder what the design would look like today if they had gone out and talked to the local community. Maybe it would have looked like a pirate ship MRI machine. But in all seriousness, this is an example of what design might look like when empathy is involved. This designer reimagined the way that a MRI is for a child. It's terrifying, loud noises, but he turned it into a journey. He turned it into an amazing journey that not only had children wanting to come back for more, but it helped the parents relax and it made the physician's job significantly easier. And even though an empathic success in full might seem almost impossible, engineers are doing the impossible every day. We literally move mountains, send people into outer space, and divert streams and rivers. What we have the power to be able to influence our world in amazing ways, and we owe it to our world to design it with them in mind. I seriously cannot wait to see what this world will look like as more engineers adapt empathy into their design. It might be as simple as interviewing somebody in their target market, or as emotional as actually experiencing the community in which they're impacting. But I do know one thing for sure. It's gonna be pretty awesome. Thank you.